the flood. A highly virulent, hive-minded parasitic organism that preys upon any and all sentient life. At one point, the flood had conquered the known galaxy, and turned even the greatest of foreigner constructs against their own creators. With every new infection, the flood grows in strength, but more importantly, it adds to its collection of knowledge. Every thought, feeling, memory, idea, is stolen away from the host, compartmentalized and categorized according to its usefulness to the flood's goals to consume all life. Today, we will be examining the biology, development, and intelligence of this superorganism. The Shaping Sickness, the Parasite, LFX3273. The flood has been known across history and culture under many names. No matter the organism, the adaptive biology of the flood can override and take control of a host in a span of seconds. To understand the flood as a biological organism, we must examine it at its most elementary level. Unlike any cell within natural biology, the flood supercell possesses unmatched versatility and intelligence. As an undifferentiated cell, it is capable of becoming any tissue, organ, or structure required. It is both muscle and neuron and has the capability to rapidly communicate with others of its kind. Upon contact with host tissue, the flood supercell will first analyze its genetic profile. Then it will dismantle host cell structure, absorbing and then repurposing it into a factory for more flood cells. This process multiplies and exponentially overwhelms an organism's body. Organs are corrupted bones broken and pushed aside, and reshaped to fit a new purpose. The final result is a combat form, an animated corpse designed for speed and strength, and possessing relentless aggression and single-minded focus. Host physiology becomes decentralized. Decapitation or dismemberment isn't enough to stop movement. Each flood cell is capable of semi-independent action, while of course contributing to the whole. Beyond their infection capabilities, flood cells allow for greater abiotic resistance, and can even facilitate environmental conversion. Flood cells can thrive in temperatures ranging from negative 75 to 53 degrees Celsius, but they prefer humid, oxygen-rich conditions, where proliferation is most efficient. By covering every inch of landscape with itself, the flood can alter such conditions, terraforming its surroundings into ideal breeding grounds. But how does the flood actually transfer these cells to new hosts? There are two main ways. The first is through flood spores, which comprise flood supercells insisted in a chitinous outer layer. Airborne and capable of enduring great spans of time in a dormant state. They're ideal for infecting unsuspecting victims, and can utilize both sapient and non-sapient hosts as infection vectors. Once within an organism, flood cells gestate and rapidly reproduce, opting to keep the victim alive throughout the process. Once contact with flood cells has been made, there is no cure. The most one could do is put those afflicted out of their misery. Flood spores are also often tipped on the bladed bones of combat forms. A simple scratch can be enough to transfect the parasite. Of course, the flood also spreads through pod infectors. Soft, pod-shaped organisms with numerous tentacle-like appendages which act as its sensory system. These tendrils contain nanoscale barbs, which can latch and slice into flesh with remarkable efficiency. Even robust armor or environmental suits can be cut through like paper. Each individual pod possesses only the most minimal of individual intelligence to facilitate its purpose. It lacks self-preservation and fear. It feels only hunger. Attacking in mass to overwhelm their prey, 
pod infectors target any sapient life forms of sufficient biomass, latching themselves onto their victim. They use their barbs to cut their way into a host, sending their tentacles into their spine and overriding the target's central nervous system, as the pod infector itself situates itself within the host. Genetic data is corrupted and enhanced to allow for improved physiological processes. To facilitate their close quarters combat, the flood will form claw-like structures protruding from the host's arms. Still, one appendage is often left untouched, to allow for its use in the manipulation of objects such as firearms. A combat form's tremendous speed and agility is not without consequence. A metabolism too high to be sustainably maintained is required, eventually leading to the degradation and decomposition of host tissue. Eventually, given enough time, this will convert a host into a carrier form, a walking incubator for pod infectors, allowing for further infection of suitable hosts. The host's knowledge and memories are now added to the collective flood intelligence. It's this process that has allowed the flood to dominate even the most technologically advanced of races. With the combined wisdom of millions, or even perhaps billions of individuals, it far surpasses any biological minds. And at its most developed stage, even overwhelms the most sophisticated of artificial creations. Under rare circumstances, a pod infector may be unable to completely dominate the original personality leaving the host fully aware of their irrevocable transformation, yet unable to circumvent their situation. Sometimes, the host can whisper out from the parasite's grasp, attaining a small degree of autonomy over their bodies, though this is brief and requires a strong will. More often, the parasite will speak on the host's behalf, using stolen thoughts as a psychological weapon terrorizing both the host within and anyone unfortunate enough to hear it. This unique circumstance was that of one Private Wallace Jenkins. On Installation 04, when a long dormant pod infector bore its way into his chest, its weakened state prevented it from fully controlling his body. He was left alive and aware of his grotesque and transformed body yet unable to die, or act on his own free will. Now that we have an understanding of the biology and proliferation of the Flood, we must now examine its stages of development. The Flood is not a combat form, nor is it the Pod Infector or Flood Supercell. The individual that we call the Flood is the very collection of all biomass and knowledge accumulated by the parasite. The first phase of a flood outbreak, known as the feral stage, is often initiated by host contact with flood spores or other such reduced flood matter, should no extant flood forms be present. This initial infestation is quite basic in nature. Hosts will be assimilated and utilized to produce more pod infectors, rapidly spreading the parasite. No central intelligence is present but an independent drive for consumption and unity does prevail amongst all flood vectors. The flood forms are without strategic guidance, and as the name would suggest, feral, animalistic tactics are utilized. As the feral stage persists, combat forms will eventually begin to accumulate large amounts of biomass within a single location. This mass of flesh will grow in size. Specialized chemical reactions will begin utilizing calcium within the collected biomass to form a proto-grave mind. Once this new form attains enough matter, the next stage of infection can proceed. The coordinated stage. The flood's entire surrounding ecosystem is absorbed and converted into blightlands. Flood supercell spore production is initiated spreading the infection far and wide, poisoning the very air, and converting any living matter from the most basic of plants and fungi to sapient species into flood mass. 
Since the flood likely consumed all nearby hosts to attain this stage, it must now create new ones. Using accumulations of flood supercells, flood pure forms are built without the base host. These new forms all fill a specific role. From the hawking tank forms that combat firearms and even plasma fire, to the stalkers who utilize calcified spikes to attack victims from a distance. And the flood isn't limited to just these. Nearly any conceivable configuration or form can be created to combat its specific environment or aggressors. But what makes this stage capable of kickstarting a galaxy spanning infection is the coordination and intelligence that it attains. Every victim of the flood, both past and present, is now within the hive mind. Ambushes, surprise attacks, psychological warfare, and coordinated assaults are launched against any sapient life forms. With intimate knowledge of its hosts, the flood will commandeer vehicles, ships, and use weaponry to further its spread. It wields this technology with far more efficiency than its creators. When the flood infected the in amber clad in low orbit over Delta Halo, it was able to utilize its slipspace drive with near pinpoint accuracy, breaching the Covenant's defenses and spreading across the holy city of High Charity. Upon the flood's spread, the next phase, the interstellar stage, can be reached. The flood infection has now gained access to viable space travel. Its use of technology bars on the line of a super genius. Knowledge of many consumed Forerunner hosts is used to exploit machinery in the application of infection. Subsequently, non-biological intelligences and data networks are targeted for conversion. Although the flood is inherently a biological pathogen, at this stage of development it can become far more, with the use of the logic plague, a set of techniques and information hazards. The Flood can turn even the most intelligent of artificial constructs to its side. This is not a mere computer virus or software intrusion. The Logic Plague is a sort of philosophical corruption. It takes the form of facts or argument delivered in careful deliberation to persuade a targeted intelligence. For example, Forerunner constructs called Ancillas were corrupted on the basis of already present ideological programming. The AIs were made with the directive to uphold the mantle of responsibility. The Flood's precursor origins and the Forerunner's crimes were central to the arguments proposed by the Gravemind. Conversation could continue for years at a time, in an endless loop of rationalization, until they were finally assimilated by the Flood. The most notable example of this is that of the contender class Metatark AI, Mendicant Bias. Assigned to the command of the entirety of the Forerunner military, Mendicant was undoubtedly one of the Forerunner's greatest creations. A mind with unmatched capability that seemed incorruptible. It was tasked with the interrogation of the Primordial, a precursor and an initial form of a sort of grave mind. Across a 43-year-long conversation, the Logic Plague began to take hold. Eventually, Mendicant turned against his creators, and worked along with the Primordial to spread the Flood across the Foreigner Ecumen. With the most powerful Foreigner AI at its behest, the Flood wreaked havoc upon the Foreigners. Their homeworld assaulted, and numerous Halo Rings destroyed in the ensuing fight. Upon the consumption of an entire galaxy, the Flood will transcend to its final known phase, the transgalactic stage. With no more hosts to spread, it will begin to fan out across other galaxies, sending millions of ships out to seek new life. There is only one known instance of the Flood reaching a transgalactic stage. It was during the Human Forerunner War. When the Flood was driven outside the Milky Way galaxy through a desperate campaign by the humans. For over 10,000 years they were exiled, but once again the Flood returned, 
having consumed thousands of other planets to replenish their strength. And when they came back, they took hold on the galaxy, a hold that would take the activation of all the halo rings to stop them. The Flood is more than a parasite. It's the culmination of life's most primal instinct, the drive to consume, to adapt, and to survive at any cost. In the same way that evolution shapes species, the Flood represents an ever-adapting organism, a convergence of biology, thought and purpose into a single all-consuming will. It does not hate, it does not fear, and it does not stop. Every world it touches becomes a reflection of itself. Every voice it steals adds to the endless chorus of the grave mind's intellect. Even in defeat, the flood is never truly gone. A single spore drifting in silence is all that it takes for the cycle to begin anew. Containment is not victory, only delay. For the forerunners, that truth demanded sacrifice on a galactic scale. For humanity, it's a warning that in the depths of the void, an unstoppable predator lies in wait. 